Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at phasers as associated with resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Starting out with resistors, how does a resistor react when, it's, when a time-varying voltage is applied to the circuit? So we're going to keep things very simple. We're just going to consider a single resistor. We have a time-varying voltage applied across the terminals of the resistor, which forces a current through the resistor, and we'll have a voltage drop across the resistor and the voltage drop across the resistor is equal to the current times the resistance. Well, what does that look like when we want to draw a phasor diagram for that? Well, it turns out that with resistors, there's no time lag or gain between the current and the resistance. So when we draw a phasor diagram, and notice that we have a phase angle associated here, along with the phase angle from the voltage input, and notice that the current direction and the voltage direction is in the same direction. Well, what do we mean by the current direction and the voltage direction? The direction of the current and the voltage, as shown with these arrows, is simply a result of what the time phase position is for the voltage and the current. In other words, that since the voltage and the current are always varying, as a function of time, you can see that the direction of the arrows here represent the physical position here on this diagram. So you can see that since this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis, the projection of the current and the voltage onto the real axis represents the physical value of that voltage or current right here at that moment in time. Of course, when you're right here at this point, when the voltage and the current are equal to zero, that would be the situation when this had rotated in a position where it's straight up to the imaginary axis and the drop down onto the real axis shows a zero amount. And so that's where you can see that if this has then completely turned into this position, that would correspond to this point right there. Now, when this, these arrows then continue to rotate, to the negative imaginary or negative real axis in this direction that corresponds to the value of the current and the voltage at this moment in time right here. Then over here you can see that the arrows then have rotated all the way to the negative direction in the imaginary axis so there will be no projection onto the real axis and so forth. So that's what the phase of diagram represents. And what's important here to realize that with resistors, there's no phase difference between the current and the voltage. They're exactly on top of one another, which then corresponds to this graph right here. They both hit a maximum and zero at the very same moment in time. So how do we then represent that into the frequency domain? And notice the frequency domain also is called the phasor domain. We can see here that the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance, and we use capital letters to indicate the voltage and the current in the frequency domain. And then if we want to write that with a phase angle, since this, in this case you can see that the current is equal to the maximum current than the cosine of omega t plus phi, which is in relationship to what we have over here. And then you can see that um, since they're in phase, they would have the same equation. And then you can see that the maximum current uh, or the voltage can they represent it by the maximum current times the resistance. This would then be the maximum voltage at that moment in time. And notice if we then translate that into the frequency domain, it's simply the current times the resistance. And if there's a phase angle other than zero, in this case, you can see that at time equals zero, there's already a phase angle right there. Then you can see that it's simply the maximum current times the resistance, which gives you the maximum voltage times the phase angle. So this equation right here is exactly represented in the phasor domain or in the frequency domain by this equation right there. Again, it's important to note that the current in the phase is in phase with the voltage when we talk about the resistance. In other words, if we measure the current through the resistor and we measure the voltage across the resistor, they will reach a maximum, a minimum, and zero at the exact same moment in time. And that's how we deal with phasor diagrams when it comes to resistors. Now, of course, they'll be a little bit different when we get to capacitors and inductors, and so watch the next videos, and we'll show you how it's done there.